Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about a new feature that was added in DaVinci Resolve 18. There are a lot of new exciting things in DaVinci Resolve 18, um, especially cloud collaboration. I've already done a video all about that and some of the really um, unique things you need to know about how that functions so uh, you don't think you're running into issues when you just don't know how it works. But in this video, I am talking about something that um, will be useful to everyone in Resolve, but especially to brand new users. There are some things that can be a little complex or confusing uh, the first time you jump into Resolve, especially with uh, project settings and timelines and all of that. And a lot of new editors uh, jump in and skip some essential steps. But this new feature um, makes addressing that all much easier. We're not wasting time. Let's get into Resolve. Here, Resolve is open and I have a completely blank project. I don't even have a timeline. And that is for one very important reason. As soon as you create a timeline, the project settings will be locked, or at least the project settings for frame rate will be locked. You can still create new timelines in any specific frame rate, uh, but the project level frame rate um, will be set to uh, normally whatever is, is default. If, if you drag in footage, you'll have the option to adjust that as well. So what I'm recommending for anyone completely new to Resolve, or if you've been using Resolve, but you're in a blank project, the first thing you should do is come up to File, project settings. You can click that and it will load up this default uh, project settings window. If you've never changed any of these options, uh, you should definitely get familiar with them. Right at the top, you will have your default resolution and frame rate. And if you know that you are primarily going to be working in one resolution frame rate, you can absolutely set that to whatever you want. If I can bump this over to 4K30, uh, then I can scroll down and look at our other settings. This next big section is for video monitoring. Uh, this um, is not when you are watching your video inside the software, this is external monitoring uh, using some of these like hardware options that you have from Blackmagic. For a lot of people, especially for my audience, I think you won't super need to think about that. But underneath that, you have optimized media and render cache. And you have a few different sections. You have proxy media, optimized media, and render cache. The one you'll probably be using the most is this render cache. So you can check this to see the different options you have here. And it's most likely you're gonna wanna go with one of these uh, DNxHR. If you are on Apple, you have the option between DNxHR and ProRes. And these do go from uh, like highest demand to uh, lowest. So in terms of both processing and file size, I believe, um, I generally keep mine at DNxHR SQ um, because that is uh, what someone smarter than me recommended. If you're on Apple, uh, I'm not sure. I know ProRes has a couple like proxy versions as well. One of those I'm sure would be great. And importantly, this is just render cache. This is just to help you uh, preview some more complicated effects or grades on your timeline if they can't play back in full time. And if you want to work with optimized media or proxy media, you can set those as well. Uh, proxy media, if you're really saving space, you can even bump that all the way down to H.264. Um, if you're just dealing, if you just need to see the general image you're working with and you know, total detail, or you're not like creating grades off that or doing complicated visual effects. Right under that is some really important settings. When to enable caching and what the automatic cache considers in user mode. Real quick, if I jump out of these settings, you can see that under playback, I have a render cache and it has a few settings. None, smart user. None, you'll have no cache. Uh, smart uh, will pick up most things and user is really going off uh, those custom boxes that you check in the project settings. Um, so if I hop back to project settings, hey, I didn't save anything I did before, so I can do it all again. 4K30, and then I bumped my render cache to SQ and my proxy media to H.264. Cool. And depending on if you're doing lots of like fusion or color or any of that, uh, you can check to include these if you want. And then under that, um, if you want to, you can change the location for any of your uh, proxy or cache clips. This is a great opportunity to say that, especially if you are new to Resolve and you are using this cache a lot, it is storing all of those files on your computer. So go to this location every once in a while or run a utility or something, and you'll probably be able to free up uh, eventually hundreds of gigabytes of space. You can do that on a per project basis uh, when you are in the project by coming up to playback, delete, render cache, and either all for that clip or you can just select individual clips to clear the cache for those. But back in project settings, uh, underneath that you just have some frame interpolation and retiming settings. That's a little more advanced. But 
say you change all of that. And now you know you have a baseline that you want to use on the majority of your videos at least. Previously, we had this option at the top for presets where you could um, save different versions. And this is still pretty useful, um, but it was just a little more complicated than it needed to be. If you just wanted to set the settings and say, okay, this be the default. If you're not jumping between different project settings, you just have the one you know you want to go to. And if I hop back to master settings, I have now set all of these the way I want. And in new, in DaVinci Resolve 18, I can come up to these three dots in the corner, click those, and click set current settings as default preset. You click that, it'll give you this option. Do you really want to update? You can click update, great. You can click cancel, and you're good to go. Now, anytime you open up Resolve, anytime you open up a new project, those settings all the way through resolution and frame rate and your proxy settings and the location for all your caches and stuff will be set to whatever you want it to be. I see people run into issues the most with frame rate, especially when they're dragging in multiple clips or they start editing in one frame rate and realize they wanted it to be a different frame rate and Resolve doesn't super like that. There are some workarounds, but it's not always fun. So that's why it's best to take care of this first thing. And in Resolve, we have that super useful button. Set it to what you want, click the button, do that in a fresh project, because like I said, you won't be able to change that frame rate option if you have uh, any clips or timelines even in your project. So to have most control, do that first. 